Tang. I'm the entrepreneurial program director at the girls' middle school, and I teach the business class to seventh grade girls there. Um, so I was pleasantly surprised when Woodside Prairie students contacted me and asked me to speak as an influencer at this event. Because when I hear the word influencer, I think of the likes of the Kardashians or Philip the Franco and sometimes the Russian hackers. Um, <laughs> but when I hear the word teacher, I think of from Patty, that's from Kelly Brown, falling asleep to the sound of <laughs> And some of you might experience that tonight. So adults over the age of 21, thank you for spending single the mile here. I know you could have better things to do. And um, <laughs> <laughs> students um, who are in the midst of about taking the, the uh, AP exams, thank you for your precious time and good luck on the test this coming week. Uh, a little bit about my background. Before I was a teacher, um, I was an engineer. I studied computer science and I worked at startup companies here in Silicon Valley for about 10 years. Um, so Silicon Valley has always been a really exciting place. Um, and back then, things moved pretty fast and engineering departments in a, a lot of these startup companies have <coughs> a lot of control over product definition. Now imagine you have an idea, yes you have the means to take that idea and bring it to life. So we feel like inventors and problem solvers. Now imagine teaching that to seventh grade girls, sharing some of that excitement, sharing some of that rush when you take a product from nothing to market acceptance. But in order to do that, I need to talk a little bit more about my program. So the entrepreneurial program at the girls' middle school is a required course for all seventh grade girls. Um, the girls would start a company and take the company throughout the entire year and work on their companies. And the culmination of this class is in the spring semester when the students would pitch their ideas to a panel of investors at the um, Computer History Museum. So on the slide on the top, you'll see the stage at the Computer History Museum where the girls talk to the investors and the investors listening intently to what the girls have to say. <coughs> So this is a little bit of what we do before the lead up to um, the pitch to the investors. When the girls first come into class first day of school, um, they usually come in, they're pretty excited about this class. So, so they'll come in with some ideas in mind already. And most often than not, um, this, the ideas would, met, uh, would be the same as their teammates. So what we do is we walk them through a brainstorming process. We teach them about focus groups. We have them make prototypes and test it. And by about late fall, they're ready for production. And meanwhile, we, the girls need to do cost analysis so we don't get into a situation where the more they sell, the more they lose. Um, and also to get ready for the pitch, they would need to work on their branding. They need to do sales and profit forecast. We ask them to do a website and we ask them to do an HTML. Uh, and they would write a business plan. So as you can imagine, that's quite a few projects happening before the pitch. So always problems will come up, and the students will have to find the solutions that usually uh, would solve the unique problems. Um, and the learning in this class is actually kind of hard to actually put it down in writing, but I would say most of the students, they uh, have the, the most difficulty with teamwork. And, and I think that's true for many of us here. So there's a few lone geniuses amongst us, but for most of us, collaboration is really important. We need collaboration to um, get feedback. We need collaboration to get context. We need collaboration to get things done. And the next thing that we try to teach the girls is define and face challenges. And this is really hard when you're kind of starting out with nothing. You have to think about what you want to do. Um, and even after you figure out what you want to do and you figure out how you're going to do it, then it comes procrastination. <laughs> So, this is when a fast-paced yet simple structured framework really helps move the student along and help them with their confidence and feeling successful. As you can probably figure out already, we need different specialties and different disciplines for different roles in the company. So sometimes we have a student who loves art and that student will pick up the job of making the logo. And some students who's good at math, she will do the cost analysis. Students who are um, good at presentations and feeling comfortable talking in front of a large audience, she would reassure a teammate that it's okay to present to a bunch of strangers 
sit in front of them judging what they're doing. So all this exercises the students' critical thinking and logic reasoning skills. So the question I'm here to answer is what is the power of teachers to inspire dynamic creativity in the next generation? So I'll give you a moment to write down your answers. <laughs> So, of course, the answer is to have a supportive and safe environment to help build the confidence and to be responsibly creative. So, it's easy to dream big, but it's hard to have the confidence to take that dream and create it into reality. But I also want to talk about the word responsibly before the word creative. So, how many of you have heard of the Fire Festival? <laughs> so for those of you who are unfamiliar, the Fire Festival is a creative venture and the idea was to um, have a, uh, a music festival on a remote island in the Caribbean. Uh, and it was heavily promoted through social media and by powerful influencers. And that's about where the creativity ended. Um, <laughs> So people were stuck on the island, there was a shortage of food and water, workers didn't get paid, and the founder eventually went to jail. So we want the students to think big, we want the students to dream big, we want the students to take risks, but we also want them to follow through. We want them to realize that with their actions are consequences to others and to themselves. So to help the student build the confidence to be responsibly creative, we need to build these life skills. Um, so decision ownership. When a student is empowered to make decisions, she's ready to use her entire toolkit, everything that she knows, uh, to solve that problem. And believe me, what they know is not what we know. Evident from Alex right there. <laughs> so for example, I had students writing a rap song, and you know it worked pretty well, but it wouldn't have been a solution that I would come up with. And self-advocacy, when we talk about self-advocacy, sometimes we think of people just registering a complaint angrily, frequently, and that's not the type of self-advocacy that we're looking for. We're looking for communications and actions that will produce a positive result. Um, and the creative world is a really competitive place, so knowing when and how to speak up will really distinguish a person from the rest of the white noise. A multiple perspective is also really important. So I'm going to tell a little story. Once I went to a workshop and the facilitator asked me to stand on a stool and have a casual conversation with a friend who came to the workshop with me. So it felt a little bit awkward even though it's a casual conversation with a friend because I'm talking to the top of her head. <laughs> so what multiple pers that perspective gave us is to look at a situation from a different angle that you're unfamiliar with and it builds empathy and it actually helps you speaking and resonating with a larger audience and you can come up with a better idea. Um, next one is the area of mastery. Uh, we're talking about skill sets and domain knowledge. What that gives you is it will be able to move you past uh, brainstorming. You can actually test out your ideas and see if they work. Domain knowledge doesn't always come at the start of a project. You don't have to know everything to start something. As a matter of fact, most of the time you'll learn throughout the process, which brings us to our final goal item on this slide is resilience. Things never work the first time, but if you stay with a problem and you study it and you try out different solutions, over time you will become the domain area expert and other people will go to you when they have a problem in the area. So, we answer the question of how to inspire creativity. creativity. First, we want to inspire confidence. And we inspire confidence by developing these competencies um, academically, socially, and emotionally. Almost every single teacher I know, either through my children or through my work, they want to work on the student's skills as a whole person. So their students are ready to meet the unexpected. And this step to create uh, to help with creativity is just a step out of the way. Thank you.